Hi, I'm Maria Pauly, and if we haven't met before, I'm a life and relationship coach, an intuitive empath and a hypnotherapist, and I work exclusively with women, empowering and supporting them emotionally, psychologically and spiritually. I want to do a video for you today on narcissism. I know that it's all over the internet, it's the newest hot topic, but because I'm a life coach and I work with a lot of women who are victims of narcissistic abuse and I have professional experience in that area plus a personal history of narcissistic abuse myself, it's time I weighed in on it. of narcissistic abuse, particularly in childhood, you may be familiar with the term complex post-traumatic stress disorder. I've been in recovery from complex post-traumatic stress disorder the whole of my adult life. I didn't know that until fairly recently, but it's one of those things that is a lifelong journey and I'm well aware that even though I've come a long way and I've done a hell of a lot of work on myself, um, I'm still in recovery from CPTSD. I've also been in relationship five times with narcissists. Now, the important thing to remember is that not all of, not everybody that has a narcissism or that we label with that term narcissist has a personality disorder or a mental illness. And I want to put straight out there that I'm a trained counsellor and a life and relationship coach and I studied psychology at university, but I am not a psychologist, so I am unable to diagnose anyone with narcissistic personality disorder. As someone who's had to deal with the effects of being in relationship with narcissists my entire life, however, um, personally, I'm a little bit of an authority and professionally, like I said before, I work with clients that have um, uh, had relationships with narcissists. So I want to go through with you today what narcissism is and what it's not. It's important that first of all you understand that narcissism, that word that we use, um, is a spectrum. So at one end of it we've got people who have narcissistic personality traits. Um, some really nice people that I know have narcissistic personality traits. I've probably had a few narcissistic personality traits along my path because if you've been reared by a narcissist, you easily pick up those personality traits and it's not until you do some work on yourself and you become self-aware that you realise what you're doing. For instance, I used to be really controlling. I was a little bit perfectionist in some of, my, in some of the things that I did. So they may be... Um, traits that you'd see in a narcissist. So some narcissists, you're quite capable of having a relationship with them. Actually, they can be really fun people. So there is a difference between somebody who has narcissistic personality traits and narcissistic personality disorder or narcissism. Let's use that word that way. Someone with narcissism has a mental illness and then there are narcissists. Now remember that we're all narcissists as children. It's perfectly normal to be self-absorbed and attention-seeking when we're children. Hopefully by the time we're young adults, we've grown out of it. You'll know people that have never grown out of it, right? They're still adolescent in their perspective. They're unable to put anybody else before themselves. So at one end of the scale, we might call people like that when we're narcissists that we're in relationship with, kind of jerks, you're in a relationship with a bit of a jerk um, and certainly that's not necessarily fun to be in relationship with someone like that but no one's perfect, right? We've all got stuff. So at one end you've got somebody with some pers a narcissistic personality traits and and then at the other end you've got full-blown mental Ill illness, narcissistic personality disorder, in order to be diagnosed with narcissistic personality disorder, you have to, they have to have a pervasive behavior, uh, pattern of behaviour of grandiosity and lacking in empathy. Um, 
And it's an interesting thing that someone who lacks empathy may appear at first as if they do have empathy because, you know, narcissists are often very smart and I think they learn um, what appropriate behaviour is and what is expected from them from others. So they can pretend empathy. It's not until you get really close to them that you understand that they actually don't care about anybody else but themselves. And that is something, again, that is a pervasive pattern over, um, you know, a long time. So be very careful that you're not diagnosing people. Um, certainly you kind of have to do it because, you know, the number one thing about narcissists is they're undiagnosed. These people never go and get help because, you know, one of the other symptoms is that it's never their fault. It's always someone else's fault. It's not them. It's you. Um, and it can be really crazy making. It can really cause a lot of pain and suffering um, for the people who are in relationships with someone with narcissistic personality traits or NPD. So I want to look at the symptoms today of NPD, the actual mental illness, narcissistic personality disorder. And remember that they say that 1% of the population has NPD. I don't actually know how they know that because they never, ever, if they can possibly help it, go and seek help. So I guess, I don't know, it's an educated guess that 1% of people in our population have NPD and they say 75% of them are men. Again, maybe it's an educated guess. I don't know. I just know that, um, oh, that it's a really difficult, difficult disorder. There isn't any hope for them. They never get better. There's no medication you can give them. So if you're in a relationship where you have a family member that has NPD, it causes a lot of pain and suffering for the people around them, the people who love them. If you've been unlucky enough to get into a loving relationship or a romantic relationship with somebody with NPD, there isn't any hope. There's no hope whatsoever. They are not going to change. They are not going to get any better. They are not going to seek help. And so you really have to ask yourself, you know, what the best course of action for you is. My personal opinion, get the hell away from them. If you don't have to be around them, you know, get the hell away from them because they can chew you up and spit you out and really, really mess with your head and make you feel like you're crazy and, and destroy your soul. So let's look at some of the symptoms of people with the mental illness, narcissistic personality disorder. Now, if you have a narcissist in your life, you may notice some of these symptoms in that person, but that doesn't mean they have a mental disorder. You have to have, you know, I think the DSM says that you have to have six things, six of these symptoms, five or six of these symptoms, along with grandiosity and um, no empathy or lack of empathy in order to qualify for uh, NPD. So here it is. First one, an inability to listen to others. So um, they may never be able to take on your point of view. They always have to be right. They may not even listen to you. Like it's the kind of person that if you're in a conversation with them, that they may um, never hear anything that you say. They're just waiting for you to stop talking so that they can start talking a bit again. But they really have trouble... Uh, taking on anyone else's point of view, listening to other people. They just don't care. I mean, quite frankly, they're not interested in what you've got to say. You're just there as, to fulfil their narcissistic supply, to fulfil their needs. They're not there to support your needs. They may appear as if they are at some times because they're, you know, they're trying to manipulate you and they're playing some game. If they're your parent, they may keep telling you that they love you, but really they may be incapable of that, and usually they are. Um, they, they have fantasies about power and beauty and success. So they may fantasise, um, you know, about being famous or being powerful or being successful. And these fantasies usually have no connection with reality whatsoever. So they could be middle-aged and have had no success or power in their lives but still fantasise about having it and still think that, you know, that's going to happen for them. Um, they often exaggerate their achievements and abilities. So they'll tell you how good they are at something all the time and it may be wildly exaggerated and, again, have no connection with reality. Um, there's a 
sense of superiority that you'll always find in someone with NPD. They think they're better than everybody else. And it doesn't matter, again, that they've got no money, they've got no education, um, they've really got nothing to show for this sense of superiority, but they believe themselves to be better than everybody else. And you might see them talking down to people that they think are beneath them, like they often talk down to people in shops, to the waitress that's serving them. Um, you know, they do it to everybody. So they'll do it to their family members and the people that are closest to them often cop the most of that, you know, this sense of superiority that they're better. Um, they have a lack of awareness regarding other people. So you'll often find that they've made up some story about you in their mind. It may be from when you were five years old. It may be from when they first met you. Um, it could be, you know, 20 or 30 or 40 years old, this story about you. And to them, you've never changed or exactly that person. So they really have a lack of awareness regarding other people. Um, and they project that onto you. So often it's got nothing to do with who you really are. You know, so, you know, that, that can be a real issue. Um, they have an increased risk of using drugs and alcohol. Usually you'll always find someone with NPD with an addiction. So they could be addicted to prescription drugs. Um, they could be addicted to alcohol, um, drug addicts. You know, there's always some sort of form of addiction going on. Um, they could be gamblers, um, you know, there's an addiction happening in them. You often see that they have social withdrawal because other people aren't good enough and they only engage with other people when they can hold the floor and talk about themselves uh, and you, you might find them withdrawing when it's time for them to listen about, you know, to what's going on with someone else. And um, if they have an enabler um, or as they call it, sometimes call it a co-narcissist, someone who actually takes care of them, their closest partner. Sometimes that is an enabler, somebody who's under the thumb. Sometimes it's another narcissist. Scary as you might find, you, you do sometimes see two narcissists getting together. Um, they can be fairly socially isolated, so they can um, spend a lot of time isolated because they, they can't, people with NPD have such a hard time having relationships. Nobody wants to put up with them. They burn everybody out, so everybody leaves them. So, you know, you often find them very socially withdrawn. Um, they have an inflated sense of their own entitlement, so they'll always demand the best for themselves. They want the best seat, their special cup. No one can sit in their seat. Um, you know, they demand to be treated, you know, like, like a queen or a king. Um, so it's this incredible sense of entitlement, and they expect everybody around them to pander to that sense of entitlement. And, you know, they fly into a rage if, you know, you're treatment of them doesn't meet with their own sense of entitlement. Um, they have often have an obsession with class and status. So again, even though they may come from, I mean, if there were social classes, they may come from, you know, a low socioeconomic background. It doesn't mean to say that they that they don't have still have that sense of superiority about themselves and, and think they're better than everybody else. Um, key point that I said before, you know, they lack empathy. Um, they like to spot weaknesses in people and they'll manipulate those weaknesses uh, to their own ends. And it doesn't matter if they're a parent or a loved one. They, they still do that, you know. They still have a, have a lack of empathy. They don't know that they're doing it. I don't know. I don't think they know they're doing it anyway. Um, so they can't really understand what it feels like for you. So you could try and explain that until you go blue in the face and they're never going to get it. They may nod and smile at you. You might think that they get it. You know, we all have this need to be understood. And if you're in a relationship with somebody, particularly if it's a parent or a child or a family member, you want them to understand who you are. So it's really painful that they just cannot. They just don't. Um, and you might find yourself trying to explain yourself to them over and over again ad nauseum and till they die or you die or the relationship breaks up. And, you know, it just you just never quite get there. They have a strong desire for control over their relationships, so you can often find them being really controlling. They're the ones who make everyone else dance to their tune. Um, they can fly into a rage and get very angry if you don't do what they want you to. And they can often be very jealous and paranoid about other people, you know, don't tell anybody anything. Um, don't talk to that person. What did you say to that person? Um, very, very, very controlling. Controlling over, you know, who you meet, 
what you do with your money, where you go, all that kind of stuff. It can be very painful for the person that they're trying to control. Um, they have envy for those perceived as being of higher status. So they often envy people that are you know, better off than they are or what they perceive as being higher up the, up the social scale. Um, an in inability to admit wrongdoing. So it's never them, right? You could, again, explain to you blue in the face. It was never them. It was always you. You are the one that's at fault. You are the one that's doing the wrong thing. They have done nothing wrong. And even if, you know, they were to do something terrible, I don't know, physically intimidate you, hit you, um, you know, completely rip you to shreds with their tongue, the next day they will feign ignorance. I don't know what you're talking about. You made that up. And, of course, that is really crazy making. Um, that, that sends you crazy. That can be, again, really soul-destroying. So they never take responsibility. So they're never the one that's going to go to counselling. The people that go to counselling and coaching are always the victims, you know, the people that are trying to have a relationship with them. Um, they can be distant. Um, I, I see this particularly in men. They can be haughty and emotionally distant and be very practical in their manner in regards to, the, to their personal relationships. So you do see that in women, but you more often see that in men. Um, they believe others are envious of them. Yeah, they think that other people are jealous of them and that's why people, you know, um, react to their behaviour or the things they say. They see it as you being jealous of them, um, not that they've, you know, actually and validly done something to upset you. Um, they can write friends off permanently over small or imagined issues. Um, and, you know, I've seen this myself. Um, you know, beware. You know, if you, you're, you know, say you, this has happened to me a number of times. You meet a new friend, a new girlfriend in my case. You meet a new friend and, you know, yeah, in the honeymoon period of this new friendship and then you hear about this other friend that they've just kicked their ass to the curb and, you know, it always makes me feel uncomfortable. I, I know that it's happened to me a couple of times and I kind of had to distance myself from that person because I always think, well, if they can kick their ass to the curb that quick over such a small thing, I'm next. I'm next. So it's always made me a little bit wary um, and rightly so. Um, they have severe anger issues. So people with you know, diagnosable um, narcissistic personality disorder, usually are rageaholics. That's how they control others. They can fly into rages. They can also do the other thing. They can play the victim and cry and guilt trip you. And, you know, they have a number, usually have a number of tools in their toolkit for manipulating you and making you do what they want you to and, and, and controlling everybody around them. But anger is usually one of them. Um, they take great pride in the accomplishments of their children and family. You know, they may never have achieved anything themselves. So, you know, think of ballet mums, you know. Um, they never manage to do it themselves, so they do it through their children, you know, and they often force the children to do things they don't want to do because they wanted to do it and they've unmet needs or, you know, it's very uncomfortable for the children of narcissists to see their parent um, laying claim to the child's own accomplishments. And, you know, that's that lack of boundaries thing that they have. So they often don't have, they don't have boundaries and their children are like an extension of their arm. There's no difference between them and their children, you know. And as, you know, if you're the child of somebody with NPD, that, that can really mess with your head too because, you know, it's really hard to, you know, become an adult and become an individual and become a sovereign being if you've got this parent hanging on to you um, because you're supposed to meet their own needs. Um, and they expect constant praise and recognition of their own achievements. So they're always telling everybody how fantastic they are and, and trying to get their, you know, emotional needs yet. So, so narcissists feed off narcissistic supply. They need to get attention and praise from other people to make themselves feel better because inside they're really a big, empty, hollow shell. It's like trying to fill up a big black hole in somebody. You're never going to do it. That's exactly what it feels like. It feels like you constantly have to keep telling this person how wonderful they are and pandering to them and placating them and giving them emotional support and sympathy over and over and over and over again. And there's just no end to it. And if you stop doing that, if you actually stop feeling that need in them, they'll just move on to somebody else who does. Um, so they're kind of the basics of narcissistic personality disorder. So 
for somebody who is in relationship with a narcissist, there's a whole bunch of other things um, that we could talk about and I will in future videos about how they manipulate you and how they get their needs met through you and just what that is like for you. And um, yeah, it's it's a certain kind of you know, crazy making brain fuckery, mind fuckery that they do to you that is can, can be completely debilitating and really hard to get over. So I hope you enjoyed that video today on narcissists. And if you've enjoyed, please like and subscribe for more videos. And if you um, have any comments, I'd be happy to read them. So thank you. Much love uh, and blessings. And thank you for this wonderful opportunity.